If there is one place in Planet Zoo that is currently lacking, it is definitely the ocean. The ocean is the largest biome on our planet, um, comprising of its own little sub-biomes, such as the kelp forest, the coral reef, and of course the open ocean. There are several different species from the ocean that currently don't exist in Planet Zoo. One major group in particular, the fish. Fish are one of the most diverse groups on our planet, and Planet Zoo should certainly include them in some capacity. Now, when it comes to an aquarium DLC, it doesn't just include the ocean. Freshwater rivers and lakes also be, are to be included here, as there are various fish and other animals existing in those environments too. The closest thing we have to the ocean right now is um, semi-aquatic animals such as penguins and seals, and I guess you could count the saltwater crocodile as well, as they both exhibit um, populations in the mangroves and estuaries, as well as onto the coral reefs occasionally. So let's dive into, if you'll pardon the pun, the aquarium DLC and what it could potentially include. So a, a major group of animals is the sharks. Now the sharks are one of the most ancient predators on the planet, stemming back to over 300 million years ago. And they have not changed too much over the course of their history and have developed to become our planet's most perfect aquatic predators. I mean, you could argue orca are one of the, the better examples of a perfect aquatic predator, but they haven't, they haven't got the same legacy that sharks do. These animals have ruled the oceans for several million years, and there are several species in our modern era that could be included in an aquarium DLC. One of the most famous is the tiger shark, a species that is kept in a few aquariums and would be a great species to have in, the, have in this pack or just as a shark in general. So with the tiger shark, you've got other species like the sand tiger or grey nurse shark, um, as we like to call them in Australia. They are also called the ragged tooth shark for very obvious reasons. There's also the iconic great hammerhead shark, um, a species I personally would love to see in the Planet Zoo. Um, you've also got the black tip reef shark, an iconic species of the coral reefs. The bull shark, one of the most notorious species of shark. White tip reef sharks, another species of our coral reefs. The zebra shark, a species known for changing sex from male to female, funny enough. Um, sandbar sharks are an iconic species in American aquariums known through many institutions. The broad-nosed seven-gill shark is one of the largest sharks in the kelp forests of uh, Monterey Bay and the in the Pacific coast of America. And yeah, it would be an interesting species to have as it doesn't resemble most other sharks that are on this list. There's also the bonnet head shark, a species that is often regarded as an omnivore as it both dines on a variety of fish as well as seagrass. There's also the leopard shark, another species of the coral, uh, not the coral reefs, the kelp forest. Um, using its coloration to help camouflage amongst the kelp. And of course, the titanic whale shark, a species that would be a mesmer mesmerizing sight in Planet Zoo. A few rays um, include the cow nose ray that you can see here, as well as the beautiful white spotted eagle ray, the blue spotted ribbon tail ray, the smooth stingray, one of the largest species in our oceans, the Southern Stingray, a commonly exhibited species. The Lesser Devil Ray or Mobular Ray, a great species for some pelagic aquariums. The Giant so Shovelnose Shark or Shovelnose Ray. The Giant Guitarfish. The Reef Manta Ray. And the largest of all, the Giant Oceanic Manta Ray with a wingspan of up to 8 meters plus. A fantastic species that I would love to see. Some other cartilaginous fish include the bone-mouthed guitarfish or mudskate, as well as the dusky smooth hound or smooth dogfish, the spotted wobbegong, and the epaulette shark, also known as the walking shark, as it moves between tide pools in, on the low tide. Some cetaceans, I haven't included a bunch. Orca is not among them, because I feel like they're just too unsuccessful in captivity that I'm not going to include them. It is a game, but 
there are morals that exist with real players. So the common bottlenose dolphin is a species kept widely in captivity and has been successfully kept in many, many ways. And when it comes to dolphins, they're probably easier to keep than a, than a giant dolphin, <laughs> aka the orca. Uh, you also have the Arctic beluga whale, a species found in many different institutions, such as the Georgia Aquarium and the Shedd Aquarium, both of which have, I mean, I could say substantial, right? But Pine Zoo could, of course, um, accompany larger aquariums for these animals. I mean, you could technically say orca, but you don't want to be removing them from their families. That is just, they're too tight-knit for that. Um, a few Cyrenians include the West Indian manatee and the dugong of the Indian Ocean and Indo-Pacific. Um, moving on to some groupers, one of our largest um, carnivorous fish in the sea. We have the Atlantic Goliath grouper, one of the largest of their kind. Um, the Queensland or giant grouper the, and the black grouper, as well as the colourful coral grouper. Moving through these quite quick because there's a lot of species to get through. We also have the oceanic sunfish, um, one of the largest bony fish in the world, and a peculiar one at that, looking like it's been run over by a dump truck or something. <laughs> but um, yeah, despite its pancake-like appearance, it is actually one of the fastest fish in the open ocean. On to a few trevally, we have the golden trevally and the um, GT or giant trevally. GT is a term I've heard some fishermen use. Um, we've also got the Crevalli Jack, another species that is very similar to a Trevally, um, that also lives in large shoals. Um, we also have the Great Barracuda, an iconic species of the oceans. Uh, some wrasse are uh, species like this humphead Maori wrasse, or Napoleon wrasse, as it's often called as well. Very colourful species of the coral reefs. Also got the Kobudai or Asian sheephead wrasse, um, a species notorious for changing sex from male to female and having as big a chin as they do a forehead. Um, one of the most peculiar fish in the sea by far. Also got the California sheephead wrasse, a species that dines on purple sea urchins to sustain the, the kelp forest. And the Blue Street Cleaner wrasse, a, a shark's favourite dentist. Um, as I said just then, they they live at cleaning stations um, in the shallow oceans of our of our planet, and will clean the teeth and jaws of large fish, rays, and sharks. Some marine reptile options include the green sea turtle, a species I included in my coastal animal fact idea. But other than him, we have the loggerhead sea turtle, a species known from North America quite well. Um, the hawksbill sea turtle, a critically endangered species, and we also have a more unique marine reptile, the yellow-lipped sea crate, one of many sea snakes in our oceans. Uh, a few um, shoaling reef fish, we have the black bar soldier fish, the blue and green chromus, blue striped snapper, yellowtail fusilia, the diagonal banded sweet lips, the bangai cardinal fish, the Sea Goldie, the Moorish Idol, and the Ring-tailed Cardinal Fish. All species that would be fantastic to see shoaling in, um, well, a shoal. <laughs> uh, a few different puffer fish species. Um, we have the long spine puffer, probably the most iconic species. The white spotted puffer fish, the black spotted puffer fish, and the guinea fowl puffer. Um, species that I have had the pleasure of seeing myself. A beautiful, um, but highly venomous animal. Well, it's actually poison. I think it's actually poison because, like, their spines aren't, um, aren't venomous, but they do have toxic organs. Um, the tangs are a very diversely coloured group of reef fish, including um, examples such as these two, the yellow tang and the um, powder blue tang. You also have species like the pallet surgeon fish, known for the role of Dory in the Finding Nemo series. Uh, well, franchise, I should say. Um, you also have the Achilles tang and multiple others um, that would make great additions to the game. 
Um, angelfish, too, are another colourful group of fish, such as this, the beautiful emperor angelfish, a species that is actually known for being sexually dimorphic, where the male is much larger and more colourful than the female, which is smaller and more, has a lot more blue and white. Um, butterfly fish also fall into that category. S species such as this, the threadfin but, um, butterfly fish, um, as well as various others that would make fantastic additions. The giant Pacific octopus is one of the largest cephalopods in the world, and the largest octopus at that. They can get to a diameter of 8 meters long, and um, yeah, they are fantastic animals known for their intelligence and incredible motherhood sacrifice. Not eating and sealing herself in a den with her eggs until she passes, giving her young the best best start in life. The giant cuttlefish is another large cephalopod, the largest of the cuttlefish, and an Australian resident, fun fact, living in the Southern Ocean and being one of the most beautiful animals you'll ever stumble across in the Southern Ocean's waters. Um, the chambered nautilus is another ancient species that would make a fantastic addition as well. Um, moray eels are by far one of my favourite kinds of fish, being incredible predators coming in a wide variety of shapes, sizes and colours. This one, the giant moray, is the largest, but there are also various others like the green moray, one of the most iconic, um, the yellow margin, um, the turkey moray. Yeah, there's a lot of moray eels that would make fantastic um, additions to plant too. Um, the spotted garden eel is a nice little decorative species to your um, reef tanks. Um, living in large colonies, this would be a, a great little animal to see in plant too. Um, the, the common lionfish is one of the most venomous fish in the sea and known for being quite painful if stung. So yeah, this yeah they are they are one of my favourite fish too. They just look so beautiful. Um, you also have anemone fish or clownfish, um, such as this, the Ocularis clownfish, um, known for, of course, Nemo and Marlin um, in the Finding Nemo and Finding Dory films. But there are, of course, various other anemone fish to choose from, but I think Frontier would easily pick this one, as it's the most marketable, I will admit. <laughs> you also have the brightly coloured mandarin fish. The... <laughs> The very intimidating, sarcastic fringe head. They may be only little fish, but they have a big mouth. Um, you also got the highly venomous stonefish, the uh, master of camouflage, the frogfish, that come in various species. Giant frogfish would probably be my choice. You also have the Garibaldi, a very goldfish looking species from the kelp forests of Monterey Bay and the Pacific Northwest. Um, you also have the peacock mantis shrimp, um, one of the most brightly coloured um, crustaceans that you'll see in the sea, um, with a punch that, yeah, it's probably worse than a bullet. Um, we've also got sea stars. Now, sea stars would be great for like little touch tanks and intertidal zone exhibits. Um, there are various species like this, the royal sea star, the sunflower sea star, a voracious predator at that, and the iconic blue linkia. I mean, you probably wouldn't know its name, but they are a very common sight in touch tanks. But there are, of course, multiple other species to choose from, as well as sea urchins, um, another great species for intertidal zone exhibits. Um, anemones, a brightly coloured group of um, animals that would be, yeah, it's a, it, they're just a must for the aquarium DLC as they add so much to um, what can start out as quite a barren tank. Um, you've also got barnacles, that would be great for intertidal zones. Um, they may look like just little rocks, they're weirdly shaped, but they are the exoskeletons of a little animal that lives inside. Um, you also have sea snails, um, clams of various kinds, um, crabs like this, the Sally Lightfoot crab of the Galapagos, uh, the Japanese spider crab, um, one of the most iconic deep sea animals. Um, lobsters like this, the American lobster. Um, Pacific cleaner shrimp would be a great species to add to any um, coral reef exhibits as they 
do pick the parasite of a majority of the residents. Uh, you've also got the corals, um, a very diverse group and very important group for sustaining the coral reef, one of the most diverse um, biomes on the planet. Um, you've also got the weirdly shaped sea cucumbers, um, a group of animals that would, even though they wouldn't really do too much, they would be a, um, yeah, it would be nice nice to see them bump up that diversity. We've also got the hyper colourful nudibranchs that come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and colours. Um, along with the nudibranchs, so you also have the blue sea dragon, another species of sea slug that remains suspended on the ocean surface. A very eye-catching addition that would be fantastic. Um, a few more fish, you have the unicorn fish, the filefish such as this, the orange spotted filefish, a species I didn't know the name of until I took the time to try and look it up. Um, you also have the trumpet fish, a very oddly shaped fish, harlequin tusk fish, Fox faced rabbit fish, the damselfish of various species, the royal grammar, the goatfish that come in a variety of species too, um, triggerfish like this, the clown triggerfish, but you've also got um, the reef triggerfish that has a notoriously long and convoluted name. <laughs> um, you also have the cowfish um, as well as the parrotfish yeah let's just say there's a lot of fish in the sea um there's also seahorses um often called one of uh nature's most poorly designed animals as they are so slow but also a very interesting animal um, um you've also got sea dragons one of the seahorses closer relatives um Moving on to a few more continental freshwater species, South America is known for its varieties, such as this, the arapaima. We've also got the tambaki or paku, the red-tailed catfish, the red-bellied piranha, um, silver arowanas, and various other fish, like oscars too. Um, um, North America has its fair share of species, such as this, the alligator gar, but you've also got various bass and sun... Um, is it sunfish or is it... Uh, can't recall. <laughs> um, Oceania um, has its own has its own little species. Like you got some freshwater eels. This the Murray cod, um, and a few perch species too. Southeast Asia has its fair share of catfish and carp. Um, like this, the iconic Mekong giant catfish. East Asia um, has its own the koi. Um, a species known for being exhibited in a variety of different gardens um, and would be a great species to liven up the, the little pools in your zoos just to add a bit more liveliness to those water bodies. Um, Europe has the beluga sturgeon as well as various other species like the Wells catfish. Um, Africa has the goliath tigerfish as well as a multitude of cichlids from the various Great Lakes. Um, moving back to the sea, we have various jellies, like this, the compass jellyfish, a species that would add um, as a great sort of, um, what's the word? Um, I, I don't know, but they're, they're, they're a very beautiful species that would get, catch the attention of any of your visitors. We've also got the kelp bass, species found in the kelp forests, as you could probably tell by the name. Um, you've also got the banded archerfish, um, a group of fish known for having impeccable accuracy by shooting water from their mouths to hit insects off of um, leaves above. A few update features such as this, the underwater tunnel. Um, you've also got uh, windows that can be placed on various angles of your visitors. So you can have them coming from the front, from the side, from above and even from below giving your visitors one of the most immersive experiences they will ever have. Um, placeable slides for um, some of the semi-aquatic species like otters, seals and penguins would certainly be a fun time um, to watch. It would be very fun. 
Uh, you've also got the touch tanks I was talking about. So these would be for some of your more harmless species like the urchins and the sea stars and even the anemones too. That would just be great for the guests to have a more immersive experience with the oceans. Um, multiple sem rock pieces. So basically what sem rock is, is cement designed to look like rocks, like you can see here. And pieces like driftwood and maybe even faux sea stars and other intertidal zone animals to sort of decorate um, the, the sem rock pieces in your aquatic exhibits. Um, up some other update features like rounded windows so that um, guests could look at a single window and have the fish go up, up in front of them and above their heads as well. Animal displays like this, a um, hanging, is it, is it a statue? I don't know. Um, basically ha hanging displays of animals such as whale sharks and other large fish um, just to give guess a hint at what animals they will find on their journeys and LED um, text would be would be great too so you can place these letters down and they will light up just to make it look more techno you know and that is all I have for you when it comes to the aquarium DLC so this is a this took me a while to make um, especially the, the slides in general, there are a lot of species to choose from and lots that just came to mind. But the aquatic environment is the most diverse on the planet and there was certainly no way I was going to let it fall short. I had to include as many that could come to mind that I could see coming into Planet Zoo. I mean, you could of course argue that we could get a planet aquarium, but um, many aquariums actually do merge with zoos. So it would be a great idea to just have them both in the same game and um, allow vi allow players to create both zoos and aquariums in the, in the same world. So you can have gorillas and elephants in one part of your zoo and you can have an aquarium with sharks, rays and various reef fish. Yeah, I think it would just be a great idea to add to that diversity factor to um, boost how the zoos appear. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video and liked the diversity that I placed in here for the Aquarium DLC, and if you have any other ideas for what the Aquarium DLC could look like, um, do leave that in the comments down below. Um, as for now, like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye.